does ideology matter uh, in Indian politics? I mean, this is a very popular question, right? Because uh, it's it's uh, popularly thought that leaders, Indian leaders, are just so utterly opportunistic. Uh, they are so power hungry that they are ready to compromise everything uh, for the loaves and fish of office. Uh, the, the the shenanigans of uh, July 2022, uh, they uh, which were you know which led to the first uh, led first to the rise uh, and then the fall of uh, Uddhav Thakre's Shiv Sena led government in Maharashtra. Now these. Uh, these are trotted out as perfect examples of an ideology bereft politics. But that's that's a bit odd, right? I mean, how can the rise and the fall, I mean, such opposite events and outcomes, how can they both exemplify the same uh, political theorem? Think about it. Uh, you know, my mind uh, now spins back to 1977 when I first acquired a fledgling political consciousness. At that time, Indira Gandhi had unexpectedly lifted the emergency, unexpectedly lifted the emergency in 1977 to, to revive democratic functioning. Her political opponents who were, you know, who were, who were in jail together for almost 18 months, they had a shared uh, incarceration, they began sniffing something that was unthinkable, a hitherto unthinkable possibility. The mighty Indira could be defeated if they put up a united fight. But, uh, but there was a problem and the problem was that ideologically the half a dozen or so opposition parties were completely disparate. I mean, not just disparate, I would say they were even inimical. Now, uh, look at it. Uh, there were the free market liberals of the Swatantra party. Then there were uh, the centrist, you know, disgruntled ex-congressmen who, who had bitterly broken away from Indira Gandhi. Then there were the sworn anti-Congress, anti-RSS, uh, uh, sung socialist followers of lawyer. And then of course there was the conservative RSS blessed Jansung. And then there were many others who was who spanned the entire left and uh, uh, labor unions uh, spectrum. But all these ideologies were put in abeyance. In fact I would uh, I would say they were dissolved not just put in abeyance they were dissolved and a united united Janta party was formed. Now Indira Gandhi's ruling congress was wiped out from the west North and East Arc, you know, the, the arc that was stretching from Kutch to Kohima, even, even as she swept uh, south of the Vindhyas. But this uh, Janata victory mirror cracked very soon. Uh, at first, the first uh, problem was uh, over the dual membership of the erstwhile Janasang and RSS members. And shortly after that, shortly after that first trouble, uh, petty egos, ambitions, you know, uh, different convictions, they unleashed a million, a million new mutinies, a fight every day. Uh, therefore, the Janata government, it collapsed in a heap in less than three years. Now, a decade later, India was ripe for one more uh, irascible, you know, inconsistent, irascible coalition. When the, when the then uh, political renegade uh, Vishwanath Pratap Singh, VP Singh, welded socialists and ex-congressmen into another, another Janata Dal in 1989. Uh, and that Janata Dal won the second highest tally in parliament. But, you know, it, it, it was still short. It still needed about 150 more uh, members of parliament to, to, be, to, to be a stable majority against Rajiv Gandhi's defeated. It was a defeated party, but still it was the single largest party, the Congress. Uh, this time, therefore, the right and the left, the BJP and the communist, they did not jump into the cauldron like they did in 1977, but they decided to prop up VP Singh from what was called outside, outside support. But you know, before long, uh, uh, what I call the scourge of 1977, the curse of 1977, it re-hit the second uh, Janata experiment. Uh, the BJP, uh, it ratcheted up Hindutva with uh, LK Advani's uh, political chariot, remember? Uh, and uh, VP Singh, VP Singh retaliated with the, the Mandal caste arithmetic. Now these two ideologies, these two ideologies, one which saw India as a monolith uh, Hindu nation and another which built itself on the caste underpinning of an intrinsically diverse, an in, 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 intrinsically divided society, these two, these two collided. Uh, the left parties, of course, were, were sort of left smouldering uh, with their very uncompromising uh, secularism. Now, within 11 months, within 11 months, this unholy, incompatible political experiment again came to grief. Now, it's often said that uh, 
those who forget the lessons of history those who forget the lessons of history they are condemned to repeat them now in 1996 a sort of reverse uh, vp singh of 1989 a reverse vp singh of 1989 structure uh, was crafted this time the congress joined the left parties and gave oxygen and uh, outside support to the devegowda led united front now the united front was virtually a sort of new nomenclature for the uh, for the earlier janata formations of 1977 and 1989 uh, and in in this instance the bjp occupied the opposition space but you know once again doom was written all over as most uh, united front constituents you know they had grown up they practiced die hard anti congressism therefore uh, very naturally a very restive congress destroyed the united front governments twice first uh, by replacing deve gowda with inder gujral and later by pulling the rug from under gujral as well i've given you uh, several examples but i'll end uh, this run of examples with perhaps the most uh, most stunning volt fast uh, in indian politics in 2015 nitish kumar tied the knot with sworn political enemies lalu yadav and the congress and they came together to annihilate uh, the bjp in bihar you know as uh, political ironies go it was i would say the plusest point the plusest point in political irony as two leaders you know two leaders whose only exchange of words whose only vocabulary was cuss words they would curse each other all the time they suddenly embraced uh, and they embraced to hand a knockout punch to prime minister modi's uh, bjp of course of course such a inconsistent coalition it couldn't last you know these ones don't as history has repeatedly proved so so you know before long uh, nitish kumar just uh, walked back home he called it walked back home to the bjp uh, uh, he called that uh, party his natural ally now what all of these examples i've just listed so many examples for you what all of these examples prove is that whenever parties political parties with utterly incompatible ideologies those who've been uh, you know sworn implacable uh, foes over decades uh, you know when they try to cobble an unnatural alliance it's not lasting never has it lasted so ideology ideology does matter it 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 sort of uh, does uh, define an uncrossable boundary a sort of lakshman rekha beyond which political decimation is foretold and while a, a political party can stray i mean it can stray into gray sort of undefinable compromises it comes to grief when it does a volt pass when it crosses the boundary into impermissible territory impermissible political territory that that kind of a volt pass is resisted by and is you know it's it's impossible to sell that uh, to your core supporters uh, and to your cadre they naturally revolt now that's that's precisely uh, what happened in maharashtra the thakareys crossed the rubicon uh, when they chose to cohabit with two congress formations with whom with whom they've been in a in a virtual political blood sport for half a century that long half a century how could they have defied history they couldn't they didn't so clearly ideology or if if you don't want to call it ideology at least you have to admit that these are uh, deep rooted political beliefs and convictions these certainly do matter uh, in indian politics